The following haunting started in 1989 in San Pedro, California. At the time of the incident, 23-year-old Jackie Hernandez's marriage had recently ended and she moved into an older style house in San Pedro with her two-year-old son Jamie, with a second child on the way. Jackie had only been in the house a month when she started hearing strange noises, such as pebbles falling through the walls. One evening, after the sounds had stopped, she found that the trap door to the attic had opened by itself. One evening, Jackie's friend Susan was visiting her, and as they were talking, they were suddenly interrupted by a loud bang coming from the kitchen. When they inspected the room, they found that a picture that had been hanging on the wall was now leaning against the back wall of the sink. To make matters even more mysterious, the nails that the pictures had been hanging on were now on the table, standing upright. One evening, a woman by the name of Tina Lawler, who was both a neighbour and a close friend, was babysitting Jackie's son, Jamie. Later that evening, she decided to check on Jamie to make sure he was safe. And as she approached this bedroom door, it suddenly opened by itself. She then walked into his room and found him safely asleep and left the room, closing the door behind her. She then turned around and found the door had opened by itself again. On another occasion, Jackie and Tina were in the kitchen cooking and noticed strange lights near the ceiling. Tina quickly grabbed the camera to film the unusual lights and was taken aback when she saw the face of an emaciated old man outside the window. When they ran outside, there was nobody there. Jackie's cat would often chase strange shadows around the house and she heard voices coming from the attic. On another day, she saw pencils fly out of a pencil holder. Now fearing for their safety, Jackie called her ex-husband Al to come to the house. He did not believe her story but nevertheless suggested she asked the spirit to reveal itself. But nothing appeared. However, after he left, she went to the closet and found that Al's name had been written hundreds of times on the closet wall. A few weeks later, Jackie gave birth to a baby girl, who she named Samantha. One day, as she was bringing in the groceries, she was shocked to see that the magnetic letters on the fridge door had been rearranged to spell the words, Get the hell out! One evening, she was awoken by the sound of heavy breathing, which seemed to be coming from her son's bedroom. She went into his room and saw the corpse of a man lying on her son's bed, but it suddenly vanished in front of her. Then every blind in her house suddenly flipped up. She never mentioned the incident to her son for fear of scaring him. It was at this stage that Jackie started to get vivid dreams about a young man. Jackie now felt she was being haunted by two entities, where one was benign while the other was downright vengeful, but both seemed to feed off her emotions. The benign spirit appeared to want to communicate with her via her dreams, where she dreamt about a young man being assaulted with a lead pipe and being drowned by his assailant in San Pedro Harbour. But the harbour looked as it did in the 1930s. In this dream, she became the dead man, experienced the horror of being held underwater until he drowned. However, the other entity wanted to feed off her fear, which gave it energy. The more fearful she became, the stronger it got. Eventually, Jackie brought in parapsychologist Barry Taff, along with a photographer by the name of Jeff Wheatcraft along with other men who bought video cameras, image intensifiers and infrared detectors. When the men arrived, her husband Al was also visiting Jackie. Weecraft started taking photographs and noticed the thick, viscous ooze coming out of the walls. Forensics later found the liquid to be human blood plasma. On another occasion, as the team was interviewing her, the crew's light suddenly went out and after a few seconds came back on. Photographer Jeff Weecraft then climbed up into the attic to take some photos. While the interview was taking place, Al had been sitting on Jamie's bed and was totally shocked when he heard someone whisper in his ear, tell them to get the hell out of here. Seconds later, he heard someone yell from the attic and found that it was Weecraft screaming that something had snatched the camera out of his hands. Up to that moment, the photographer had taken the whole exercise as a joke but after being accosted by something unseen, he became a believer. When one of the paranormal team members, Barry Conrad, went up to the attic to help Weecraft locate the camera, his own video camera battery immediately lost power. When they were finally able to locate the camera, they found the main body of the camera in one place and the lens in another. There is no doubt that whatever entity was occupying the house was definitely not friendly, 
and was about to take his activities to another level. Jackie had had enough and decided to leave the house. The last night that Jackie was staying in the house, the entity taunted Jackie further. While she was in bed, she could hear the sound of one of her children's beach balls being thrown into the living room. Jackie momentarily closed her eyes, but was suddenly awoken by force holding her down, and she was unable to breathe. When the force finally released her, Jackie felt an incredible anger and quickly grabbed the baseball bat and figured it was time to fight back. She then went up to the attic for the first time and screamed out to the entity. To her utter surprise, it showed itself and the shock sent her tumbling through the trap door and onto the floor below. She quickly grabbed the kids and ran out of the house and rang the paranormal team and pleaded for the help again. But in the middle of the conversation, the line cut out. The team returned to the house for further investigations where Gary Bowen, the sound recordist, and Jeff Weecraft went up into the attic. Initially, they found nothing, but suddenly an unseen force grabbed Jeff and dragged him away. Gary then pursued the photographer with a small camera and found him up against the roof support with his head at an odd angle and a noose around his neck. Some malevolent force was trying to kill him. The team had a videotape that shows a snapshot of Weecraft hanging from the ceiling. Jackie moved out immediately along with the team. Late in 1989, Jackie and her husband attempted to get back together and moved to a trailer in Weldon in Kern County, California. And initially, their relationship went well and Jackie's fears began to fade and she started to relax and feel comfortable. But within a few months, their relationship deteriorated again and the phenomena returned. The first incident happened when she and two neighbours were moving a TV into storage and all three saw the image of an old man on the screen. It was the same man that she'd seen in a San Pedro house. That night, she was kept awake by the sound of someone pounding inside this shed as if they were trying to get out. Jackie again called the paranormal team who came out one night and immediately found they were having trouble with their video cameras as something kept switching off the equipment. To seek further information, Jackie and her friends used an Ouija board and got an immediate response when the table began to shake. They then asked a few questions and found that the entity had been in spirit for 60 years and had died in San Pedro Bay, where he drowned and claimed he'd been murdered. They asked him whether he lived in Jackie's old house in San Pedro and he said, no, my murderer lived there. The entity said that he was born in 1912 and passed away in 1930. After checking newspapers reports from 1930, they found that a seaman's body had been found floating under a pier on March 25th, 1930, and his name was Herman Hendrickson. Authorities determined that the seaman had sustained head injuries when he fell off a dock, and Jackie Hernandez believed that Hendrickson is the ghost that haunts her dreams. Shortly after the session ended, an invisible force threw Wheatcraft, the photographer, against the trailer wall. Attempting to identify her other ghost was more difficult, and to get more information, they spoke to older residents in San Pedro. They learned that the house was built by a man named John Damon, so they assumed that he is the old man who appeared to Jackie Hernandez on a trip to the bathroom. Hernandez stayed in the Weldon trailer until the summer of 1990, when she moved back to Los Angeles, and unfortunately, the entities followed her. After a period of time, the entities' actions started to lessen. One of the ghosts, who she believed to be John Damon, the original owner of the house in San Pedro, appeared to her one last time, when in the spring of 1990, she saw a ball of light outside the house where she was staying. She followed the light to a nearby graveyard, where it hovered over a stone, marking the grave as that of John Damon. Hernandez said that the ball of light floated around the grave and just disappeared. She guessed Damon was saying goodbye. The following year, the other ghost finally left as his visits slowly became infrequent. After everything that she'd experienced, Hernandez said that she was more scared of dying than she was before because she believes that the ghost who haunted her appeared to be living in hell and did not want to suffer the same fate but at the same time did not regret the strange experience she'd gone through, as it had opened her mind to another reality.